Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins, I am a Linode Developer Advocate, and what we're going to be doing in this video is covering the basics of Hugo, including the installation, creating a new site, theming, content editing, and deploying our website on the node using Apache. But we are getting a little ahead of ourselves here, we must first ask, what is Hugo? Simply put, Hugo is a static website generator that allows you to build beautiful static websites with ease. Static websites are nice because they take very little system resources to host, and compared to something like WordPress that relies on databases, PHP, static websites are simply HTML, CSS, and the occasional line of JavaScript. So static sites are perfect for simple blogs, documentation, websites, portfolios, and more. Now, building static websites from scratch is a little difficult since every page in a static site is literally its own file. And if you want to make site-wide changes, you're going to need to update every file of the website. If you're hosting a website with two or three pages, this probably isn't a big deal. But if you want to host a blog or just a complex sitemap of pages, this becomes a lot of work really Quick, Hugo and other static site generators take on a vast majority of the work, as if you want to change some text in your footer or even post a new blog entry, Hugo will completely generate the entire website with the changes in a matter of seconds, in which you can easily upload the newly generated site to your website's root directory. So. With that, let's go ahead and jump on into the installation of Hugo. All right, so here we are on my desktop and this right here is the Hugo website. You're gonna to wanna to go to this website because you'll have a lot of information here, including the documentations and themes, which we will be diving into in just a sec but most important is the documentation. Right here is everything you're gonna to want to know, including content organization, Hugo's lookup order, the directory structure, installing, and everything. We're only gonna be covering a couple of the things in this video just to get us started. And if you do end up liking and using the static site generator on a frequent basis, this right here is a wonderful resource for you. For example, in here under getting started, if we head over to the overview, you could see a lot of the key things that you're gonna to want to know going into this, including configuring markup, up because most of everything is written in markup and then the actual static site generator turns all those markup files that you create into html and css files and over here is the installation and you can see it's cross-platform so mac os windows linux really whatever you're going to be on it's going to work completely fine and you do have a lot of different ways to install this i'm on ubuntu now so that's the method that i'm going to use it is somewhere down here so linux we have a bunch of different options but of course hugo is just the package name in Ubuntu and Debian. Now, the cool thing about Hugo is it's actually CLI based, so you can install this either on your local machine or you could even just go ahead and install it on your Linode and do all your site building and working there. For this video, I'm going to be installing Hugo locally and then deploying it on a Apache server here on Linode, but everything I'm doing, since this is going to be under Ubuntu on my system, can be mimicked in a Linode running Ubuntu. And of course, depending on whatever distribution you choose, you could go through here and pick what is suitable for your preferences. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for now and actually install Hugo. And to do this, we're just going to open up our terminal emulator. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you all can see it perfectly fine. So first things first, on this Ubuntu system, we're just going to do a sudo apt install, and we're going to install Hugo. And I will know I did just update and upgrade my system, so there's not really a need to do that at the moment. But if you haven't, run a sudo apt update before you install Hugo. And there we go. Now we have Hugo installed. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. All right, and to check that was successful, we could just run a Hugo help. And we can see that we have a lot of options here. So one, it's completely installed and we have a lot of the stuff that we can do with Hugo. And now that we have Hugo installed, let's actually go ahead and pick the location where we want the working directory for our website. And I will note that this can be anywhere. You can run this on your home directory as we're about to do. You can run it on a flash drive or even in a Nextcloud backup folder. If we LS real quick, we can see we are in my home folder. This is where I'm going to want to build my website for now and then we'll go ahead and deploy the public files later. So to build a new site, all you need to do is type in Hugo, new site, and then the URL of the site, or you can really put whatever you want. In this case, I'm gonna do hopkey.net because that is the domain that I'm gonna be using to demonstrate this. 
So let's hit enter. And then you can see, congratulations, your new Hugo site was just created here. And then it gives us the steps in which we are going to want to do after that. And the very important thing is downloading and choosing a theme. We'll go ahead and add a little bit of content and then we will start the built-in server and view it using Hugo server. But first I kind of want to show you what we have to work with here. So if I CD into that new directory we just created or it automatically created for us, LS, you can see here we have the config TOML, our content directory, data directory, layouts, static, and themes. The main things we're going to focus on in this introductory video is the config, the content, and the themes over here. And then static content can be used for storing uh, images, CSS, JavaScript, really whatever you want. So now we're going to dive into the theming. And this is probably one of the most important aspects of Hugo as much of the layout and content formatting will work around this. So now that we have our new site created, what we're going to want to do is add a theme. Now Hugo has an extensive list of themes that you could go through and pick from. And every theme usually comes with rather extensive documentation of various installation options, example sites, and more. And for example, over here under tags, let's say I wanted to start a blog and let's say this one right here, Jane stood out to me. So all I would do is click on that and we have some links up here, but if you scroll down, this is where you're going to usually find all the documentation and information that you're going to need about the site, including its features, who uses it. And we have a quick start and some of the stuff we just talked about, including installing Hugo, creating a new site and using the Hugo Jane theme. And you can see right here, we could just clone the repository right into our themes folder. So I'm going to give that a copy. And now from our themes directory where we installed it, we're going to go ahead and paste this on in. It's going to copy that. And now we have the theme downloaded. And if we go and check on that, we could CD into our themes folder LS and you'll see Jane there. And if we CD into Jane and LS, you can see some of the stuff that it comes with including example site, which we're going to be pulling some things from real quick as per their documentation. So I'm going to CD up a couple levels real quick. And from here, I'm going to paste in this command. And if I go ahead and hit enter, I LS and I CD into our content LS from there. And then let's CD into post LS. You can see a whole bunch of markdown files here. And that is the example content we just copied over. And you'll be able to see that more in just a sec. So I'm going to go ahead and CD back into the root for our new site here. And now just for demonstration real quick, what I'm going to do is show you what the config file looks like from default. So if I open, open that up real quick, you could see there's only really a couple lines. I already went ahead and change some of this. This would be example. And this would say your Hugo site. If I go ahead and back out of here, and what we're going to do is copy and paste that example config file, hit enter. And now if we jump back into it, you could see there is a lot more options, including our theme right here. It's equal to Jane. So it's going to go ahead and pull that. And then you'll have a lot more options. So here author, we're going to probably want to change that. We have our sitemap where that gets generated. Some of our menu options that we could go ahead and change and everything within this configuration is fairly readable and understandable. So you know what you're actually changing. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of this for now. And we can actually serve our site at this point locally, just to kind of see what it is looking like. And to do that, all we're going to want to do is is run Hugo server, hit enter. And now we can see here that it gives us some information. It's building our site and you can see how many pages we have, how many static files, aliases, and sitemaps. So it gives us a little bit of statistics based on the website we just created. And this is where it's available. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a click. It's gonna jump us over here. And now you can see this is at localhost at port 1313. And this is our website. And one of the cool things with these example websites, a lot of the times it's just a bunch of little tutorials within your own website. So short code previews, for example, you could see some of the capabilities that this offers, including the ability to host code blocks, YouTube videos, just a bunch of stuff. And you have image previews and a whole bunch of things you could change here as well. This is your site, so everything you're seeing is completely customizable. And you can kind of see the layout of this. So right here, this is under post and short codes preview. So what we'd want to do to actually see this as the source, let's head back over the terminal. I'm gonna go control C to stop our little temporary server there. If I LS to see what's going on, what we're gonna to want to do is a CD into content. And then from there, we're gonna CD into our posts. And then from there, right here, short code preview, this is the page we were just on. So if you wanted to actually see what that looks like, 
all we could do is go nano and of course i'm just using nano right now for this video you could use whatever text editing application you like including something like vs code or vim really anything but for this case i'm going to want to go to short codes dash preview enter that and you could kind of see how the contents laid out so title we have short code preview we have the published date, last modified date, if this is a draft or not, various tags and categories. So it's organized like a normal blog. And then we have the menu options. So the parent to this is documentation. And then here is the actual content of the site. And these are really nice because then it gives you live examples of everything we just saw on the website. So for example, these are codes and quotes. We have how to import YouTube and various other videos really nice. So just as a demonstration to show you how easy it is to edit this, what is a short code or what a short code is, we could change this to something like, what is it? Question mark, go control O, enter control X. And then from our site directory, we can run a Hugo serve again, open up the site. And then again, under categories, we could go to short code preview. And now it just says, what is it instead of what it said previously. So just a little example of editing a already existing page. Now these next steps are going to involve static site generation and getting Apache set up and running on the node. Now I run through the Apache installation fairly quickly. So I would recommend you check out some of the other videos on this channel specific to Apache and the documentation that I'm going to be using will be linked down below. All right, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and create those static files and deploy them on Linode. So first things first, what we're going to want to do is go back to our terminal. I'm going to stop this temporary server for now. And you can see right now I'm in my root directory for the website. So simply just run the Hugo command, hit enter, and you can see right there, it is building the site and it kind of gave us the same statistics as before, except for this time, if we LS, we're going to see a new directory. That new directory is public. So now if I CD into public LS, and this is what we are going to be uploading to Linode. There's a bunch of different ways to send this over to Linode, but we're going to talk about that after we first set up a quick Apache web server. Now this right here is the Linode I'm going to be doing this on. I've already spun it up and I've already configured the hopkey.net domain name within the Linode domains here to be properly associated with this. So everything's all connected up and ready to go. What I'm going to do is copy the root SSH right here, head back to our terminal, and I'm just going to open up a new tab real quick, zoom in again, and then let's go ahead and paste in our SSH right here. So let's hit enter. Yes, this is my server. And then let's type in our password. And now that they're in, there's going to be a couple things we want to do to prep. Now, again, this is not a full Apache web server guide. There's a couple of those and I do recommend you read more documentation and watch more tutorials above what I'm doing in this video. So first things first and most important, we're going to run a apt update and we're going to run a app dist up grade. So this will completely update the repositories and all the packages on the system and just hit enter to confirm that. And it looks like there's a new kernel. So I'm just going to say, okay, and I'm going to end up doing a full system restart anyway. So saying okay to that should be fine. Now what we're going to do real quick is edit our host name. So this is going to be in the Etsy folder under host name. And generally, since this is going to be associated with a domain name directly, I'm going to call it hopkey.net. If you host multiple websites off the same Linode, you can change your host name to really whatever you want. And now we could basically run the same thing, except for this is going to be hosts right here. I'm just going to make a new line. I'm going to go 20 or 127 0.1.1 tab. And then I'm going to call this the same thing. This is going to be the hopkey.net domain control O to output that and X to get out of there. And now with that, what we're going to do real quick is create a limited pseudo user because it's always better to do this as a uh, pseudo user over root. And to do this, it's actually pretty easy. We're just going to do add user and then type in the username that you want. Give your new user a password. Make sure it's pretty strong and secure. Here you can fill this out if you want to, if you're gonna have multiple users connecting to the server, but for me, in this use case, it is not important. So all that information is correct. And now before we leave here, we're gonna do add user, type in the username again, and we're gonna type in sudo, which that will add the user to the sudo group. 
And then from there, let's go ahead and reboot our Linode. This way, those host names will be changed and it will go ahead and load that new kernel that we just installed with the update. And to check up on that, we could always go over to our web browser here. We can see Linode here. If you launch your Lish console, this is kind of like a uh, live shell to see exactly what your server is doing. And we can see it boot up. And when it does prompt us to log in, we'll know that we are ready to go. And there's a login prompt. So I'm just going to close this out, jump back to our terminal, and we're going to SSH into it again. This time we're going to SSH into our limited pseudo user, which is Brandon. Type in our password. And there we go, Brandon at Hopkey. So now let's go ahead and actually install Apache. So to do this, we're going to do sudo apt install Apache 2. And in addition to that, we're going to grab the Apache 2 dash doc as well as the Apache 2 dash utils. Hit enter, type in your password. Here you can see everything that it's going to go ahead and grab. Let's hit enter to continue. And now that it's installed, we can run a system CTL and we could check the status of that, of Apache 2. Hit enter. And you can see Apache 2 is currently up, active, and running. So control C to get out of there. Da, 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 da. And another thing just to demonstrate that it's working, if we go back to our Linode here and copy our main IP address, paste it on into our web browser and hit enter, you're going to see the default Apache 2 page for this Ubuntu Linode. So we are going in the right direction here. And now if we did a LS into our Etsy under Apache 2, and we want to look at sites available, you can see we have some default configuration files. Now for now, I'm actually going to disable our default website and disabling websites in Apache is pretty easy. We're just going to run a sudo and then we're going to do a2 for Apache 2 and we're going to do this for disable and site. And then we're gonna disable this 000-default config here. And to activate this new configuration, we could just run this right here. So let's give that a copy, run this as sudo, paste that on in, and there we go. And now at this point, there are some Linode specific customizations and optimizations that you can do. And I do recommend you check out the official documentation on that but we're gonna go ahead and move on to our firewall real fast. So let's do a sudo UFW and we're gonna do a app list to see our options here. You can see we have Apache full. What we're gonna do is allow that. So let's do sudo UFW allow Apache full. I think I might need to add these, hit enter and there we go. So that is now allowed. And just to check, you could do a sudo UFW and stats. Well, it's good we checked that. Enabling the firewall in the first place is probably a good move. So just run and enable, may disrupt connections. I'm gonna proceed because it should be fine. And now if I check the status, you can see we are now allowing Apache full. And now what we're gonna do is actually make the directories for our website. So let's go ahead and CD into our var directory because that is where this is gonna be stored. So if we do an LS, we'll see the www right there. That is where we want to go. And then let's go ahead and go into HTML. And here, all we see thus far is the index HTML. That's the default site that we saw earlier. What we're going to do is create our directories for our new site. So let's go sudo mk directory for a make directory and just call it the domain we're going to be making. So this is going to be hopkey.net and then hit enter. And now within hopkey.net, we're going to create our public HTML folder. We're going to make our log folder and we are going to make our backups folder. And now what we're going to do that that's created is actually CD back into the sites available folder we were just in. So that's Etsy, Apache 2 and sites available. And then within here, we're going to create our configuration for our new website. And we're just going to do that with a sudo nano and this is going to be hopkey.net.conf just like that so we're going to hit enter and now what i'm going to do is just paste in this this is pulled directly from the Linode documentation so you're going to want to go through here and make sure everything matches up to the information you're going to need so change your email and any instance of your website.com or it could be example.com you're going to want to change this to the domain that you're going to be hosting so for example, hopkey.net, hopkey.net. And then here, this is the directories we just created. So right here, this is the URL. So we're gonna want to switch this out for the proper one and then do the same thing with both error logs that we have right here. So get rid of that and then get rid of that. Hopkey.net. So now control O to save this out, control X to get out of here. And now what we're gonna do is enable our website the same way or almost the same way 
that we disabled the default. So if I go sudo a2 just like before, but this time we're going to do in for enable site, and this is going to be that config file. So hopkey.net.conf, hit enter. And just like before, we're going to need to reload Apache 2 to reload this configuration. So I'm going to run a sudo, paste that on in, and hit enter. So it looks like there's a syntax error on line 9, so my copy and paste probably just wasn't very successful. So let's jump back into that configuration real quick. Line 9, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It probably has to do with this. All right, let's see if that helps. Control O, X reload aha so it worked just little syntax error the littlest things can slow you down cool so now i should be able to go over here and travel to hopkey.net and we can see this is our ubuntu server the public html directory is completely empty but we're going to change that in just a second so now that we have our linode up and ready let's go ahead and deploy our website now like i said earlier there are a ton of ways to publish this public directory into linode you can, like I said, install this directly on the node and just copy and paste it over or even create a symbolic link with your public directory or public folder here and the public HTML on the actual Apache host. Or you could run a SFTP command to copy the directories over. But one of my favorite things to do is use file. Zilla. FileZilla is a wonderful tool for SFTP and FTP file transfers. It's cross-platform available on Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. One thing I need to do real quick is actually allow us in. So let's go, Brandon, type in my password, and let's go U, UFW app list once again, run that as a root, and let's go uh, sudo UFW allow and open SSH. There we go. So now if we try to log in, we should be able to FTP and just go directly to hopkey.net. And we're going to go in as the root user. So we just copy and paste those files into the proper directory without any permissions issues. Type in your password and quick connect it. OK. And here we go. So we're going to go back a directory and go into our var and then go under www HTML hopkey.net and public html now this directory right here is the exact same as this directory and we can demonstrate that let's go create a new file and we just do like test.txt for example hit ok head over to firefox and give that a refresh and you'll see that file there so now what we're going to do is completely just copy over our public directory so to do that we're going to go to hopkey.net on our local machine and under public here, this is everything we need to move over. So I could just copy all of this, drag and drop it, and then it's gonna go ahead and transfer over all of our files. And everything was successful. So now if I go back over here and I give this a refresh, you are going to see that static site that we were able to render through our local host domain. Except for this time, it's on the World Wide Web and we have an issue here. Local host, we forgot to change a configuration. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how to easily change that and re-upload your site. So we're just gonna go back to our terminal here, go to our tab in which we are modifying our local stuff. And all we need to do is go back a directory. And that is obviously a general configuration issue. So we could go nano and jump, jump into our config file. And here right here, our base URL is what needs to be changed. So we could just change this over to hopkey.net, control O to output that, control X. And now in here, just like we did before, run Hugo to regenerate that website. And then all we need to do is jump back over to FileZilla. I'm gonna hit F5 to refresh this. And now I could just select everything and then drop it over here. And for this, for little changes like this, we could just overwrite everything. If you do a lot of big changes on your website and you're deleting posts and things like that, you'll want to click quickly clear everything out and then drag and drop it. But for now, I could just do a simple overwrite and of course apply this to future requests. And then once everything's over, we could go and try that again. So I'm going to reload this. And now when I go to different pages, it's going to have the proper base URL. So everything is going to work perfectly fine. 
And now just for the cherry on top, you can see right here that the site is not secure. So what we're gonna do is go grab some things that we're gonna be needing. So let's jump over to our terminal again. This is our the node for the hopkey.net. And what we're gonna want to do is a sudo apt install. And we're gonna want to go ahead and grab certbot. And I believe the other package is python dash certbot dash apache. Hit enter and we're going to type in our sudo password and we're going to proceed with the installation of those packages. And now all we need to do is give it a certificate. So to do that, we're just going to run certbot dash dash apache dash d and then our domain. So that's going to be hopkey.net go ahead and hit enter. And of course, due to this is a limited sudo user, we're gonna to need to run this as a sudo command. Type in our email address, and then here go ahead and read through those terms of service. Say why, if you do agree with them. This is giving a email to the nonprofit organization that runs Let's Encrypt. I've already given it to them, so I'm gonna say no for now. And it's gonna go ahead and request that certificate. And there we go. It looks like it was successful. So now if we head back over to Firefox and we're to go to our homepage, we can see now that the connection is secure by Let's Encrypt. So I hope you enjoyed this basic introduction to Hugo and the steps it takes to deploy a website using Hugo on Linode. With that, I do recommend you check out some of the other videos on this channel. It's a whole bunch of awesome cloud computing content that you are sure to love. And like always, anything we mention in these videos will be linked down below for further information and research. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for those future uploads. And if you look down below, there will be a link to a $100 60 day credit. So you could go ahead and try this out today. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.